before we get started with the video today guys, I want to let you viewers out there know that only a small fraction of you guys currently watching are actually subscribed to my channel, so make sure to smash that subscribe button for instant updates about videos that I release and other announcements, and also smash that like button to help my channel out. Enjoy the video! Yo, it is Small here guys, and welcome back to another one of my Zero to Hero episodes. Today I'm going to be just covering how I progress and what I need to focus on, or what you guys should be focusing on as well. Now, I'm sorry I haven't been releasing a lot of um, episodes recently, it's just that I've been really busy, and honestly that there isn't a lot of content that you need to focus on at this time. I covered pretty much everything, uh, you're just right now just gearing your Wyvern units right and preparing them to get into Wyvern. So before I get started, let's just go over how far I progressed in Unrecorded History in Episode 2. So I recommend in episode 2 you get at least to 4-10 and clear it, and you'll end up at 5-1 here, like I said, because you want to unlock something called Hall of Trials, which I'll cover a little bit later in this video. And also in Unrecorded History, right, you're going to want to get to at least 9-1, because this is the area that sells Angelica's Catalyst um, in the AP Exchange Shop. And yeah, everyone else's Catalyst you can farm before 9-1, so if you get here you have access to all of them. I'm at about chapter 7 right now in Unrecorded History. And yeah, going over my Wyvern team though, guys. Um, I'm going to go over the units one by one for you guys. So this is my Sigrid, guys. Um, you'll see that she is 6-starred, which is weird because Angelica is not 6-starred yet. And I usually recommend Angelica to be 6-starred first. The only reason why I 6-starred uh, Sigrid first is because I wanted to farm faster because I have a lot of stuff to farm right now. Automaton Tower, Side Story, right? And the new side store is pretty annoying because the bosses are super tanky. So I did 6 star my Sigrid first, even though Sigrid is fine at 5 stars for Wyvern early game. Um, you can clear Wyvern 13 with only 1 6 star being Angelica. But I did 6 star Sigrid because I do want to run my Wyvern runs a bit faster. And you guys will probably eventually 6 star Sigrid anyways. But yeah, if you do plan to 6 star a unit first, make, um, try to do Angelica. But if you want to do what I did in 6 star Sigrid, that's fine as well. Just keep in mind that Angelica being 5 star makes it a lot harder for to tank Wyvern. And you do need to get her to 6 stars, so you will have to 6 star 2 units to do Wyvern instead of just 6 starring 1. Um, so yeah, that is the only downside to this. And yeah, just going over her gear real quick, she's using the she's using the free attack set gear um, from the check-in. Um, you'll notice that I have my weapon and helmet at plus 15, but the other pieces I do need to enhance more. This is a nice chest piece for early game. Um, I really need to enhance the necklace and the ring, um, although I might replace the ring later for an effect in this ring. Um, but the necklace for sure, because it rolled pretty well into speed, and it's a lot of damage I'm missing out on because like the main stats crit damage, so 23% crit damage I'm missing out on right now, and also attack I'm missing 26% attack, so a lot of damage by not plus um, 15 in your gear. So make sure you guys plus 15 in your gear ASAP. Also her boots are pretty eh as well because a lot of health rolls, but I do plan to swap out her boots as well for speed um, main stat boots anyways, so I'll most likely only be using the weapon, helmet, chest, and necklace. For her skill enhances, um, yeah, I have her S2 or S1 at plus two. I probably will enhance it more in a second once I start farming seriously. But you do want to get this to plus four at least. And you also want to get her S2 to plus four for the effect chance, so her debuff stick. And you want to get her S3 to at least plus three for the turn cooldown. You can also plus 15 and max all of her skills. It's not a bad investment because you'll use Sigurd forever in Wyvern. And eventually when you start one-shotting, you'll still be using Sigurd. So Sigurd is an investment that will, you know, take you for the long run. And she's just very, very powerful at all stages of the game. Um, she's also at 4 star awakening so I do need to farm more runes and catalyst to awaken her all the way because I'm missing out on a lot of damage. Um, her 5 star awakening is attack and her 6 star awakening is um, actually crit damage so you're just missing out on a lot of free stats. So you do want a 6 star awaken cigarette eventually once you get her to 6 stars. Very important to do. You're missing out on a lot of damage for not doing it. She's also on daydream joker which I do need to get more copies of to max limit break and also enhance to make sure the damage goes up on this. This will be your primary source of damage that scales with crit so that's why you want to stack as much crit damage as you can. And I go over stat priorities in my Wyvern guide on my channel if you guys want to check that out and see what stats I recommend. And next we have Alexa. So Alexa is using the Adventure's Path attack set. Um, it actually all rolled pretty poorly, so the attack's okay here, right? Kind of usable, but the you know the helmet's okay, right? But eh, I guess I have to dodge more crit chance because crit chance is pretty useless, right? 70% crit chance is 35% more than I need for Wyvern because I'm running Furious, right? To give me a 50% crit chance boost. And I get 15% against Wyvern for being the advantageous element. Her chest is also very bad. It didn't really roll into anything nice. And I guess her neck and ring I haven't rolled into yet. But her ring I'm going to replace with an effectiveness ring anyways. And her boots I'm going to replace with speed main stat boots again as well. 
So what most likely will happen is I'm going to actually probably um, take a pit stop at Wyvern 11 or 12, whatever I can farm, and then farm a completely new set for Alexa because uh, I'm not too happy with this set right now. Um, but this will be good enough to farm Wyvern 11, don't worry, especially if you enhance it more. Just the base stats and the free gear alone is enough to actually carry you through Wyvern 11 for sure. Um, but afterwards, I'm probably going to swap her gear a bit. I'll probably swap everyone's gear for more speed and effectiveness um, from the boots and ring. And then also just change her, you know, left side gear and her, her, um, yeah, I guess her left side gear and her ring and boots as well. Just because I'm not happy with this, this ruling. Also, uh, her artifacts the same Daydream Joker. I do need to maximum break it. You want to give your best copy of Daydream Joker to uh, Alexa because her S1 does hit twice. So you get two procs of it. So very, very important. Uh, for skill enhances, I'm going to max her S1. Um, so she's a three-star unit, so she doesn't cost any mola. So there's no point in not doing this. Um, but yeah, probably do this um, soon. Let's get more stigma. But you want to max her S1. You want to max her S2, especially if you use her as a debuffer. And then her S3. Do not get the plus three. Stop at plus two, guys. The reason why you don't want plus three is because this actually does less damage than S1 in most situations, and it actually makes you debuff less. So if you're struggling with debuffs, which you most likely will, um, this actually makes you debuff less with the Lex. This is very, very bad to get. Um, so yeah, skip this. Um, she'll use it once in a while, but it's okay. As long as she's not using more often um, by upgrading it, it's it's better. Trust me. And then for Furious, guys, um, I actually have him on the free uh, Spiritaria gear on the speed set. Um, I'm just going to roll it. You don't really need that many stats on him. You just need um, speed and effectiveness. That's literally it. It doesn't matter what you get. <laughs> speed and effectiveness. You just want to be a speedy boy that can uh, defense break a lot. Um, so I'm most likely going to switch his ring to effectiveness. R um, his boots to speed boots as well. Um, his artifact is weird. I don't have another copy of Daydream Joker or Song of Stars, so I'm going to have to pull more for that. And then also, um, yeah, I don't know how this will roll, but it should be fine. Honestly, you could probably run him on this no matter how it rolls into. And as long as you have good uh, speed main stat boots and good um, effectiveness ring, you should be fine. Although you do kind of want some speed subs. But you can always swap this out easily later once you start with farming Wyvern 11 because it's all speed set. Very easy to swap out, which drops from uh, Wyvern as well. Um, skill enhances, guys. You're going to want to... Um, Get the S2 for sure, then S3 to plus 6 for max chance and the cooldown reduction. And if you get cooldown reduction on both S2 and S3, what happens is that if he's in the fastest on your team, he will perma keep crit buff up on your team and perma defense break the boss, given that it doesn't get resisted. S1 is okay if you want the effect chance for the burn, it'll make it 35%, but that's still pretty low, so really up to you guys. Um, I do have mine on my main mola because uh, early when I first started my main, I was actually really struggling with the debuffs because I didn't have cigarette. So that's why I didn't mind. So it's really up to you if you guys are struggling with debuffs. Um, and yeah, for Awakenings, um, Awakening, I'm going to stop him at 4 stars. You only need to really get him to 3 stars, guys. Because like I said, you get um, an, a, a boost to your, one of your abilities at 3 stars. But um, afterwards, you only get damage. And crit chance is useless, right? Because the crit chance is very low. Like, crit chance requirements is already really low for Wyvern. And the fifth one is attack. And keep in mind, Fierce doesn't really do damage. So it doesn't really matter too much. Um, also, Alexa, you're going to want to 5 star, guys. Because you get all damage. Um, from her awakenings and now we're going on to Angelica on candlestick you want this for sure and then i'm also running her on the free hp set which i'll probably swap out her boots for speed main stat boost so she's fast enough to heal and doesn't get lapped and also whatever piece rolls the worst right you're going to want to swap out for another um, random set but level 85 piece that you get from crafting um, with good tank subs because if i swap out these boots for um speed main stat boots right I'm actually going to break one of my health sets, um, health sets down here, so um, yeah, there's no point in keeping the extra um, poorly rolled health set gear that I got for free. I can just swap it in with whatever. And you just want to make her as tanky as possible. Just plus 15 your gear at the start. It'll just make her super tanky, and you'll you'll be able to clear Wyvern 11 for sure. Because Wyvern 11 is just a tank check, guys. And Candlestick, so she resets the cooldown of her S2 and S3, her healing abilities, and makes her super tanky by um, healing all the time. Which is also why you don't want to get lapped, and you want speed main stat boots. For skill enhances, guys, I'm going to probably recommend just seeing how she does first without any, and then you can add some skill enhances if you've done if you've exhausted all your options, like you've maxed her um, gear out, you've awakened her six star awakening, um, and then you're still dying. Then you can start mulling her S2 and S3 so she gets extra healing. I've done it already because um, yeah, I don't really plan. I don't really think I can survive without at least one or two molas to be honest, because my gear's all rolling into Ephra's as you can see my weapon, my uh, chest, my neck, right. So it's going to be a little bit tough, but it should be okay, honestly. I think uh, the gear they give you in the beginning, no matter how it rolls, because of the base stats, you, you should be fine enough to clear Wyvern 11 at least. And you can always take a pit stop at Wyvern 11, guys, to farm your gear to replace your free set gear if you really need to. Um, although in some situations where your free set gear rolls fine, you only need to replace like some pieces for like 
speed boots or effectiveness rings per se, right? Um, and yeah. And also I use Free Spirit Tyria and Arbiter Vildred as my dog walkers or catalyst farmers or you know EXP farmers. And since the event is um there's a free unequip event right now, you can switch your gear from Sigurd and Alexa to Free Spirit Tyria and Arbiter Vildred. So take advantage of it guys, they will speed up your catalyst farming because they have all AoE abilities. Um, Alexa and Sigurd have only single targets, so it's actually slower even though they might be higher level or higher stars or higher awakened. Um, but yeah, keep in mind you only want to do this during the unequip event guys. If you're watching the video and it's not an unequip event, you might want not want to do this because unequipping your gear actually costs a lot of gold. So you don't want to waste all your gold unequipping and swapping your gear around. That is a big mistake that newer players make. Um, they just run out of gold early by swapping around gear too much. So you really do not want to do that guys. Um, very very bad uh, idea. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my units guys. I'm gonna 6 star awake in my cigarette. Um, going to 6 star Angelica for sure, you need to 6 star Angelica out of every single unit she's the most important and 6 star Awakener as well just so that she's even more tanky because her Awakening will give her um, health in both slots right that I'm missing right and also plus 15 some gear out so I do more damage and get my Catalyst to also enhance some of the skills I need and that's pretty much for my units guys now let's talk about um, summoning so I've been just basically summoning on the regular banner um, from the Covenant Summon, but now with the new banners out, you can actually start pulling for like, specific units, um, especially because um, you have your Wyvern team pretty much almost set at this point. Um, you just need like Daedron Jokers, or like Candlesticks, right, or like Clarissa, right? But those can all come from um, banner units as well, so you can start like hoarding your um, Sky Stones, especially if good banners are around, start pulling for good units that are featured. Um, so the two banners out right now of this video, Bologna is a very, very good option to pull for, right? Uh, because you can still pull for Daydream Jokers off this, right? You can still pull for like Clarissa if you're missing her from your team, right? You see Clarissa here. Uh, Daydream Jokers somewhere here as well. But the thing is, Bologna is a very good 5-star unit. Like if you compare it to the other 5-star units that you could pull from regular Covenant Summons. Um, and I know some of you guys might be saying you could pull a Moonlight Summon from Covenant. It's very rare, guys. So it's not really worth wasting and trying to um, hunt for Moonlight Summons early game. It's very, very waste of... It's a very big waste of um, Covenant bookmarks. And also if you look at the 5-star heroes, right? You'll see the chance of getting a specific one is 0 0.02 for an RGB. For ML, it's even lower, right? So if you look at Bologna and her strength compared to like a lot of these, like she's definitely stronger than more than like 70% of these units, I'd say, for early game, mid game PVE. So definitely pull on Bologna banner because if you look at Bologna's banner, if you pull a 5 star, it's guaranteed to be Bologna, 1%, right? So yeah, she's very good after Wyvern for raid, Abyss. So I definitely recommend pulling for her banner for new mid game players. Especially because she's just going to carry you in early mid game PvE. Even late game, she's very nice, and you can use her in PvP as well. Um, for Summertime Assyria, though, she is a limited unit, so she, you might want to pull her. She only comes around once a year, but she doesn't really have much use in PvE. And in PvP, she's pretty hard to use at the moment. She's kind of weak. Um, she may get buffs, though, but the thing with her unit is you kind of need like a fully limit break, um, what's it called? Uh, artifact as well, so it's like really hard to use her. Um, but if you really like her design and you do want to pull her because she's limited, it's understandable. Pull for her if you want. She's pretty waifu and uh, I think she might get buffs in the future as well. So yeah. But by the time you guys can uh, use her, it might even be next year where her banner's out again. So you never know guys. Uh, but if you do have extra bookmarks, just go for it. And uh, it's really up to you to decide. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for what I recommend to summon on. Um, to keep summoning on Bologna guys, she's very very good early in mid game. But if you have the spare bookmarks, go for it. And also um, for Mystics, right? Um, looking at Mystic Banners, you'll see that you can get an RGB 5-star and a uh, good 5-star artifact and some 4-star units, right? You want to pull on banners that have good options for you. Not just the ML5, not just the ML4, guys. Like, that's a bonus, right? But for early mid-game players, you're mostly looking at like the 4-star units especially and the RGB and the um, artifact. Because if you look at the rates, right? The ML5 getting summoned is 0.625 and the 5-star RGB is also 0.625. So you pull on a banner that has a good ML and a good RGB5 unit, you have like double the chance of just pull of um, getting a good unit rather than if you just pulled for the ML5, right? So this is like a very good banner to pull on because the ML5 is like decent, ML4 is very strong, the RGB5 is very strong, Idol's Cheer is very strong, and Clarissa is here, right? Which is very strong, right? Orius is a very good artifact, right? It'd be more like even better if there was like DDJ here, right? So if there was DDJ here, it'd be like even more of a reason to pull. So like you can look for DDJs that way, um, especially if the featured 5-star um, Moonlight Hero is like the one you like or the one you want. Um, and if you don't get like what you want, you end up pulling the ML5 randomly. It's not like, oh man, I pulled the ML5, right? It's like, oh, I pulled the ML5 for free, right? Because you weren't even looking for him. So just stuff like that. Very important to take advantage of. Um, 
I usually recommend early game players just to look at like the bottom uh, RGB stuff um, and just make sure the ML5 is something that's like what you like and something that's like decent, right? So closer trial is pretty decent. So yeah, pretty good to pull on this Mystic Banner with your Mystic Medals that you get from Guild Wars and you can get from rolling the Secret Shop. Now going over um, side story, guys. So side story is a very very important thing to do. Um, this side story is called the Order of the Sword and the Word of Summer. So you really want to make sure you're doing this. Um, in the store, you'll see that it drops a, a lot of goodies, actually. There's Molagora, Covenant Bookmarks, Phantasma, Charms, and there's also Catalyst. Now, Epic Catalyst in the AP store are 400. Here, it's 170. Um, rare Catalysts are 120, and here, they're 90. Um, although, it might not be the Catalyst you need, guys. Um, they're a lot cheaper, and it's way more energy efficient to buy it here. So even if you don't need it, just buy them all out. You can always, like... Um, use them later in the future when you pull units or use units that use these and there's also like a lot of good stuff here So you want to make sure you do this and the way you do it is you just go inside um, There's actually three sections one each one is separated by like a week So week one like the first section opened this is the beach and then week two the um uh, What's it called? I don't know I go went back there But in week two the fortress opened the spider fortress here and what you do is you get to this red stage here um, there's also going to be others like bonus stages you can get like bonus mola and bonus gold but focusing on how to farm the currency you go to one of these stages you just farm the hardest difficulty you can um, and then you get you know coins so in in uh, unrecorded history it's eight energy for i think 12 points or eight points i think it's 12 but here it's eight energy for 15 and that's the easiest stage the higher you go the more efficient it gets so make sure you farm this asap it is a very fast way to get catalysts and get like extra stuff you want and make sure you're also doing the reputation quest to get like bonus leaves. You get gear as well, right? Um, the gear is very useful, even it's a mid late game because it is free and the stats are pretty nice and yeah, pretty good to farm. You want to make sure you fill this out as well if you can, and also do the region rewards. I still need to do it here. Um, you get gold and free penguins and um, sky stones as well. And with side story, guys, um, I already stressed this already last video, but make sure you do automaton tower very very nice because you know how i said you want to switch your units to effectiveness rings and speed boots well you can get the accessory ch uh, chest here and you can select um, effectiveness ring from it um, you can choose the main stat and it'll always be speed set because it's a featured speed set chest this week of automaton tower and it is a really easy way for you to get effectiveness rings you actually can get three i think from this so it's three for your dps so it's perfect make sure you get these um and yeah it is speed set this week so it is the best set you can get in general it's very very nice you can always fit it in with other pieces that you get from wyvern to make a speed set later on if you wanted to and it also gives you really nice loot such as charms mola gold sky stones transmit stones so make sure you do this um at least do level one if you can't do level two very important that you do this um for multiple reasons because you just get so much gear and really good charms and stuff like i said um but yeah that's pretty much pretty much it for automaton tower uh, while i'm here though guys i'll show you how far i've gotten to wyvern so i'm at wyvern 11 uh, you want to just manual complete these stages once up to 11 don't farm anything before 11 11 12 and 13 are where you're going to start farming um, just because there's too much rng in 10 and below the boss hits random units but in 11 and 12 it'll always hit your front line and 13 you can put debuffs on the boss to make it hit your front line so important to get to 11 and then you start farming 11 um as soon as you can especially once you have the gear and awakenings all done and the skill enhances so you can start farming for the 85 gear and the mats to craft it um, uh, craft the 85 gear so you can progress into 12 and 13 eventually um, so yeah you, you're probably going to make a pit stop in 11 and 12 for a bit and then progress to 13 13 is a lot harder than 12 and 11 just because of the debuffs um, but yeah once you get here um you're basically in the home clearing it's very very easy you just have to run in and farm it a bit and take advantage of some events that are coming up which I'll talk about in a sec, actually. So, actually, there are events coming up um, for Epic 7. So, starting tomorrow, I think, there's going to be a Spirit Altar event, um, which is basically going to mean in Spirit Altar, they'll all be open, and every time you get a rune, it's actually doubled. So, you get double runes for an entire day. So, very, very nice to farm for new players, right? Especially now, if you're starting right now, because you can start getting a head start to um, awakening your units, right? Farm all the Frost runes that you need to um, awaken your units. Also, the day after, there's going to be a catalyst slash adventure event right so what that means is they're going to be um basically higher um exp drops basically when you clear stage you get more exp from clearing stages um, which will help you with foddering um and um you know promoting units to get to six stars and also what will happen is you get extra ap from clearing stages which means you can get more catalysts that way 
It's a very nice way to also get your catalyst you need for awakening and skill enhancing. So very important to do um, that as well. And very nice timing on this for new players because you can get a head start on your wyvern team like I said. And after that, you'll have, I don't know if it's after, if, if it's before the AP event, but there'll be a hunt event. And if you can get to hunt 11 in time, you can start farming hunt. And the hunt event will make sure that you get extra mats that drop from the boss. I think you get like 30% or 50%, I think. And then you also get extra gold for crafting, right? Which you'll need. So very, very nice to have um, these events at this time. Make sure you guys take advantage of them to help you um, catapult your progression um, and possibly pass me as well, which I hope you guys can because uh, I've been kind of slacking on this account. So yeah, very important to do, guys. Um, and yeah, in, just in regards to um, the hunt event and like when you craft with those crafting mats that you get, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do it real quick. So uh, to craft, I don't know if you guys know already, but Steel Workshop, right? You want to improve this all the way, especially the one in the middle and the one on the right. The one on the left is very good as well, so you want to max all of them. But you really want to make sure you prioritize this after your Heart of Orbis because it's very, very important because you're going to be crafting for the entirety of the game and it will be your main source of gear. So when you craft though, guys, um, for early game, I recommend crafting weapons, helmets, and chests. Because if you look right here, I'm clicking, it says, you know, a stat that's there. So basically what that means is that uh, piece of gear can ha has a chance to or will drop that stat as their main stat. But for necklaces, rings, and boots, it is a question mark. So there's RNG on the right side. So you do want to farm your or craft your left side gear first because it is easier to get um, better gear for your weapon, helmet, and chest because there's no RNG for your main stat. Whereas for your right side gear, your, your necklace, ring, and boots, you have RNG. So early game, focus on your left side gear to get the best gear possible to make your you um, make the barrier to entry to Wyvern a lot sooner, a lot easier to clear um, for you guys um, because you really want to get into Wyvern as soon as you can, especially Wyvern 13. But once you're in Wyvern 13 and farming it pretty consistently, pretty easily, then you start um, crafting your right side gear because there is more RNG. Um, you do want to craft this more late game because um, if you don't craft these and only craft left side gear because you get more um, good pieces from left side gear, you'll actually have a super bad proportion um, in left side gear to right side gear, right? You'll have like 10 good weapons to like one good necklace, which is not what you want because every unit uses one necklace and one weapon only. So yeah, make sure after you start clearing Wyvern 13 pretty easily, that's when you start crafting right side gear. Or if you need like the effectiveness rings or speed boots or like a crit damage neck right away and you're missing one piece, then you can craft some right side gear and it'll be fine too early game. Um, but yeah, primary focus on left side gear early game. After you start clearing Wyvern 13, primary focus on right side gear only. Uh, I think I don't ever craft left side gear ever. Maybe like 1% of my crafts are probably left side gear right now. So yeah, very important to do. Uh, and Steel, Steel Workshop, upgrade this right away. So yeah, that's pretty much what I am planning to focus on for my account. You know, just take advantage of the events coming up. I need to farm more runes, get more catalysts, and also, you know, try to upgrade my gear as well to prepare for Wyvern 11 farm. And get into Wyvern 11 farm as soon as I can. Farm that for a bit, craft some gear, effectiveness ring and speed main stat boots, get into Wyvern 12, craft more gear if I need to, um, increase some stats, and then get into Wyvern 13 and farming that, and that you'll be farming that for a long while. And after that, you can start crafting gear from Wyvern 13 to put on your other units like Arbiter Vildred, like Bologna if you pulled for her, and other units that you can use for other PvE content. So you can start branching out into other areas of content, even PvP as well. Um, if you guys need help with my stat guidelines, guys, uh, for Wyvern, um, I have a Wyvern guide on my channel that you can check out and it'll give you all the stat guidelines you need to um, help you get into Wyvern for every unit. Um, Sigurd, Alexa, Furious for running that, I have stats for all of them, Angelica as well. Um, that's pretty much it guys for this episode. I know it wasn't that much info, um, but yeah, there's not really much to do. You just need to keep farming um, and just make sure you get your units all awakened to the point they need to be, get your skill enhances up and get your gear enhanced as well. And then start progging into Wyvern 11 and then try to get to 13 as soon as you can. Um, that's pretty much it for this episode guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed and make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe and I'll be back with another episode soon.